Cheers and salutations, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Hard Lens Media. My name is Kit Cabello, and we got ourselves a huge show. So right now we're starting off with a very important interview. I think that's long overdue with Larry Sharp. He is a commentator. He's run for office. He's an independent libertarian and through and through. So for those watching on Can TV, check the rest of the Hard Lens Media out on YouTube, Rumble, Rockfin, Odyssey, and Kick. So returning back to our show, uh, None other than Larry Sharp. Larry, welcome back to the show. It's long overdue that we actually have this conversation because, you know, we are now in the second month of the new year. It's the 2024 election cycle. Everything's going crazy. So uh, how how are you holding up before we start going in deep with the independence, Tucker Carlson in, in, interview, and the, I guess the war on third parties now as it's starting to intensify, and I guess Joe Biden's mental health. How are you holding up with all this craziness? There's been a war on third parties for decades, my friend. I've been fighting that war for a long time. I, I got to tell you, the one thing I like about this is mm -hmm. at least now it's coming more to the front, right? That yeah. more people are seeing it, more people are thinking about it, more people are concerned about it than ever. And that's that, I guess, is the hope that I have, right? That's the part mm -hmm. that's positive for me. As bad as it's been, and, and as you know, it's been bad. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people in your chat are Jill Stein fans. And mm -hmm. they're concerned about Jill Stein. I get it. I like Jill Stein. I do. And mm -hmm. she, she's fought this battle as far back as 2016. She's been fighting this battle too. We've been right. all fighting this battle. My the, the positive thing for all of you guys who like the third parties, whoever you, wherever you may stand, this may be a good year for us because at least now people are starting to get it. So there is some hope. Yeah, I'll I'll say my my criticism of third parties this year is I think of maybe the opportunities that were lost to really start building more, um, especially with the greens and yeah. more or less yeah, with, with the independents. I mean, with the libertarians, let, let's, let's call it spade a spade and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the libertarians got at least 38 to 40 States for ballot access. Am I wrong on that? What is the exact number? Cause sure. I know the libertarians at the moment we're at about, we're going to, we're at about 48, if I'm not mistaken. 40, uh, okay. 48. Yes. Well, we just again, got Maine, we just mm -hmm. got Maine like last, last month or so we just got Maine, which was, it was cost us, over 20 grand just to get Maine. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that, that, that's one state over 20 grand. So now we're going to try to find a way to get New York, which is going to be a bear. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a couple we have to still work on. So we're probably going to have, we might have 50, but we'll probably have at least 48 to 49. But we might have 49. All right. All right. Le leaps and bounds ahead of Dr. West, Jill Stein, yes. uh, RFK Jr. I mean, and, and, and we will bring up RFK yeah. Jr. But go ahead. You, you were going to say something. I don't want to uh, cut yeah, you off. Yeah. The, the Greens have been right behind us in general because the Greens have the second amount of funding that we have mm -hmm. and the second amount compared to us of infrastructure. One thing the Libertarian Party has is a lot of infrastructure, right? We actually have physically, we actually have, you know, affiliates in every state. We mm -hmm. actually have people who've been through this before. So infrastructure, we beat the Greens on, which is why yeah. we often get on, on more ballots. Right. Um, but Greens sometimes have more, better and more candidates than we do. That does sometimes happen. But infrastructure... We have down. We're the third largest when it comes to infrastructure and also money. Right. Um, it, forward party, if it is a party, I don't know if it is, raises the most money when it comes to third parties. Mm -hmm. But they have virtually no infrastructure compared to us. I, from what I know, Andrew Yang, who found the uh, forward party, was on the road for Dean Phillips. Which again, if if, if 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 you're if you're all in for third parties, uh, please be all in. And again, that's my criticism of it. It's not for, with the libertarians. I mean, obviously, there's going to be some political disagreements, but in regards for infrastructure yeah. and being consistent, I I do like seeing things come together and work. And I wish that other third parties and independents would do that. But nonetheless, independents are front and center, especially uh, independents and third parties are front and center because we, you know, I've covered on the show recently how the Biden administration or either that people surrounding Biden, if he can remember it or not are urging him to go on attack towards third parties more than yep. against the Democratic candidates, which is fascinating because we're witnessing a mainstream political administration, not Biden, but I'm going to say an administration, Democratic administration, going all in for attack towards third parties and independents, which for a long time, the media has portrayed as, well, these are spoilers. These are these are mm -hmm. irrelevant parties. And now they're, they're doubling down on spoilers and it's going to a vote for a third party candidate is a vote for Donald Trump. Uh, Larry, I, I've asked you this question before, but I think one more time for it. Is a vote for a third party candidate a vote for another uh, 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 mainstream can't be a Democrat or Republican. Can can you enlighten the people about that? People often get my own libertarians often get upset at me 
as Larry, why the hell do you talk to people like Cornell West? Why Jill Stein? Why do you support people? Like, like I've openly supported both of them and I am a libertarian. Why? Mm -hmm. Literally, you guys may not know this. Coming up to the California Libertarian Party coming up here, February 24th, Jill Stein will be speaking. Cornell West will be speaking. RFK Jr. will be speaking at a libertarian convention. Why in the world would I? Because a vote for a third party is a vote for changing the system. And if the system is changed, right? I know people say, well, Larry, I don't want to support your guy or gal because then they won't give me what I want. The two-party system won't give you what you want. If you vote for my guy or I vote for your guy to be forward with you, or like I will vote third party even if I don't have a libertarian on the ballot. I will still mm -hmm. vote third party. Right. Because if I, a third party actually gets moves through this and breaks a hole, if that happens, all the rest can come in. Mm -hmm. Nobody comes in if one of us don't come in. And that's the critical piece. It is a third party. If you vote for a non-third party, the two duopoly, you're voting mm -hmm. to keep things the same. If you're voting for a third party, you're voting to at least try to change the system. So uh, one, one thing I want to even uh, bring up here, too, especially during the 2022 midterm election cycle, you know, I did not vote Democrat. I did not vote Republican, but I saw a lot of libertarians, a few greens and a few socialist parties there. And mostly uh, for, I, I will give the Illinois Libertarian Party credit for this. They managed to secure a uh, majority of the ballot for their candidates to be on there, which is yep. fantastic. And it's it's no easy feat to do. I mean, Illinois is yep. one of the most draconian states towards independence and third parties and that's being consistent and i i do want to switch things up here though because again there, there's so much attention towards third parties um recently the media has been talking about rfk jr and courting the libertarian party and already yep. there's a, there's a primary happening here so i think for our viewers number one can somebody else enter into the Libertarian Party primary right now? And either that, who is right now the front leader for the uh, Libertarian Party nomination? Because, you know, the media is only mentioning Jill Stein, Dr. West, RFK Jr. Are, are, when, when when will there be a final nominee for the Libertarians? Yeah. How, 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 can, can you explain to our viewers about this process? Because I'm wondering if mainstream media is getting this wrong. Because a candidate can't enter into a nomination process when it's, I think, almost halfway done. Take it away. Well, they, they can, actually. The media is okay. correct in this one. They can do it. Here's how okay. it works. The Libertarian Party does what I think is a bad idea. However, it is the system that I have. And that is we select our nominee at convention in late May. In mm -hmm. theory, anybody could show up and get elected. And it has happened. We had Bob Barr once as our nominee. Blah. <laughs> I know, but we did. It's I'm embarrassed to say it, but it did happen. I can't lie. It happened. <laughs> that was horrible embarrassment. I know. Because we couldn't find anybody. He showed up. Everybody fought. We fought amongst ourselves like Mongols trying to, you know, trying to repair the the, the Khanate. And mm -hmm. and Bob Barr came to the top yelling the loudest, and he actually won. So that actually wow. does happen sometimes. So it could happen. However, okay. that has gone away, right? Right now, we actually do have people who go through every single state convention, meet and greet, and try to grab people. That does happen. So the odds of happening now are slim. That kind of went away in 2012 when Gary Johnson was our nominee. Mm -hmm. One thing Gary Johnson did well was he actually made the party much more about we can bring a libertarian aboard. We don't have to grab people. We could do this kind of thing. He was better at it. And since him, we've had money more, much more of a better party. Libertarians have been – more libertarians have showed up. So, yes. Yeah, so what will happen is there are about eight people who are running about four or five are serious about running right now. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the front front runners are um, the guy who ran in Georgia. You may know you may have heard of him, a guy named Chase Oliver. Yep. Um, interviewed him. Absolutely. Yes. Chase Oliver. He actually he's the one who caused the runoff in Georgia for you people who lean left. Maybe one of the reasons why you have a left leaning senator out of Georgia could be because of him. Maybe he's the one who caused the actual um, he's the one who caused the actual runoff. Also, Lars Mapstead. Lars Mapstead mm -hmm. is a, a interviewed him too. Tech. There we go. A, a wealthy tech guy out of California. He can self fund. He's got some good cash on him, which is great. Those two. Uh, Michael Termot is also running. He is a, um, a former economist out of D.C. and um in addition, a guy named Michael Rechtenwald is running. Michael Rechtenwald is supported by one of the largest caucuses within the party. Mises caucus. He's a um, professor, teacher, author. Mm -hmm. um, also, Josh Smith, who has also been a member in the past of the actual um, LNC. 
in the past. So we have a couple people who are running who are really trying to make this happen. Um, is there a front runner? Right now, when it comes to overall, I think the top two people in general are going to be both Chase Oliver and Lars Mapstead. They, by the way, for those who are watching that free and equal debates that will come up February 29th, Jill Stein made it, Cornell West made it, so did um, uh, Lars Mapstead and uh, Chase Oliver. Uh, six wow. people made that, and two libertarians will be on that debate stage in New York here, February 29th live. Wow. So uh, I'll be sure to check. Hey, send me the details for that so I can at least share that with my audience because I want to see yep. the overall end result of that. So, uh, okay. It's free and equal dot org for those free and equal dot org. It. Okay. Yes. So then for, for our viewing audience then, like, cause I know you've been involved with a lot of political campaigns. You, you, you've run, you've ran yep. for various offices before. Um, but what are your thoughts about RFK, this whole idea of RFK Jr. joining the libertarian party? I mean, at this yes. point he's, he ran as a Democrat, ran as an independent. Uh, obviously, yep. uh, he's been losing some support with his uh, state uh, with his uh, stance on Gaza and the overall crisis that's happening there. 100%. One, um, one thing that yeah, everyone should know, whether people like libertarians or not, we are we were the anti-war party before it was cool. OK, we are 100 percent anti-war. We've been anti-war since when the Democrats forgot about anti-war. Libertarians were still anti-war. We are absolutely anti-war. 100% no. So, yeah, that stance he has on in the Middle East, not great for libertarians. We are not happy about that. There are basically three people in the Libertarian Party you really have to convince that have a lot of juice, really a lot of juice in the party. Dave Smith, the comedian, Spike Cohen, our former VP, mm -hmm. and um, Amash, uh, Justin Amash, the former Libertarian congressman. Those three are the key. Mm -hmm. He has convinced neither of those three. So the odds of him becoming the Libertarian candidate are slim to none. Yeah, now, I go ahead, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Should, should he keep doing what he's doing? I think he should. I think it's smart for Jill Stein to come to our convention. I think it's smart for Cornell West to come to our convention. I think it's smart. I tried to get Dela Cruz to come. She mm -hmm. won't respond to me. If anyone happens to have a a connection to Dela Cruz, I'm happy to have her come to our conventions too, and mm -hmm. I'm happy to have them have her. And she's a socialist. Fine. Yes. And the point being, they're all going to come because they want to court libertarian votes, because many libertarians think as I do, which is we need a third party. We have to break this system. Anybody mm -hmm. who breaks through helps everybody break through. So mm -hmm. I think it's smart what he's doing. He should be doing it. But the odds of him getting the, the nomination slim to none. I, I, I don't see it. All right. Fan. All right. Well, then I think that answers a, a lot of my questions in regards to third, third parties and independence. But I want to do a little bit of a time travel back in time. So when I was on your show, uh, there uh, it, we were covering a subject of when Tucker Carlson was let loose from Fox News and overall yep. whether Fox would regret this decision or not. Uh, I think we both agreed they would. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, but but more or less, holy cow! I was more impressed of the the, uh, the TCN network that Tucker Carlson has created, and recently this huge fallout from the media of his one interview with Vladimir Putin. Even though Oliver Stone, Barbara Walters, George Stephanopoulos, I mean Stephanopoulos, interviewed Putin before, and so many other people yes. have, but now he's being viewed as a traitor. And we 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 brought this up not only on my show, but on your show as well, of the overall censorship and suppression that we'll be seeing from the media, especially in the 2024 election cycle. Um, I want to get your thoughts on the interview that Tucker Carlson did with Vladimir Putin, and also for the fact that we are looking at the media going on a full blitzkrieg attack against one person who does one interview. I mean, we, we've both been in this business where we have guests on our show, people we agree with, people we don't agree with. But that's that's how that's how you run a news program. That's how you run a commentary show. Yes. You have to interview people. I mean, that, yes. that's how it is. That's that's, yes. that's show business in general. So take it away. The floor is yours. I want to get your thoughts on this. Well, the, the point is, look, you and I talk all the time and mm -hmm. you're not a libertarian. I know that. Right. But we right. have to understand how we think. If we're go if we're just gonna be like, I hate the other, let's stay at war forever. Don't talk. That's right. Don't talk. We'll just yell at each other all day long and and then be fine. But if we actually want to try to convince each other, if we believe that we are brothers and we mm -hmm. want to try to find some common ground whenever we can, we yep. have to talk. That's it. But I'll go one step further. I'm gonna be controversial. We should always talk to our enemies no matter what. 
And I mean, no matter what, I'm going to give you what I think is a very tough one. It's probably drive your chat nuts, but I'm going to do it anyway. We, when we did in the 1940s, when our FDR said unconditional surrender for the Germans and the Japanese, and we will not talk to you unless you want unconditional surrender, he literally extended the war at least one year, if not two. Mm -hmm. In 1943, both the Japanese and the Germans were open to, to the ending the war. And you might go, but they're terrible. They're Nazis. They're whatever. Yeah, and there still are Nazis in the world. It hasn't changed. But could I have stopped the death of millions of people? Could I have ended that war? But what about Hitler? Talk. That's all. You can still keep fighting the war. I'm not saying don't stop fighting. But mm -hmm. you can still talk while you're fighting. You can mm -hmm. say, hey, we're still going to invade. We're still going to fight. But hey, if you want to talk, we can talk. Give us Hitler and the top whatever. 100 bad guys. Whatever the number. I don't know what the number is. Give those people to us. And we can start talking about peace. We'll have a conversation. And, and, and we'll, you know, Germany will still exist. Not with Nazis in it, but it will still exist. What they thought was, you're going to destroy Germany, we're all going to die, so let's fight to the death. And they did. Literally in the last year and a half of the war, how many Jews were killed in the, in the camps in that last year and a half? How many Germans, Russians, Americans, British, and French died? How many Japanese died? We nuked the Japanese when the Japanese were actually talking to the Russians to try to get some kind of peace. Talking to people is not a bad thing. You can still keep fighting. You can still keep pushing, but talking. Talking is yeah. the right answer. How in the hell are we going to get whatever the end of the Ukraine war is going to be? I don't know what that's going to be. Is it going to be with Russia winning, with Russia pulling out, with Ukraine being owned by I don't know. But regardless, don't you want to have a conversation to save as many lives as possible for whatever the outcome is? I think talking is a right idea. Even people say we shouldn't. We should always talk. You never know. Plus something else. If you start talking, there's a chance that people may come aboard and change. Right? Mm -hmm. Not everybody was always what they are now. Not mm -hmm. everybody was a socialist. Not everybody was a libertarian. Not everybody was a whatever. Mm -hmm. Right? No, not everybody was that. At some point, they changed their mind. Probably because someone talked to them and said something that made sense to them in their own mind. And they were mm -hmm. ready for it. Keep talking. I and I... That's why I'm sorry. You have to wait, but yes, keep talking. No, no, no. I, I, I here, here's the thing. I, I, I don't believe in the whole idea of changing your mind, but more of okay. I didn't see that perspective before. Ooh, let me, okay. let me, let me reconsider this and maybe meet you at the halfway point. I mean, I mean, I, 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 now do people do change their minds? Like, yes, there is that. But I think, like, let me, let, let me reconsider this because I, I always want to make sure that if I'm going to be speaking to conservatives or libertarians or socialists or anybody else, including liberals, the vote blue, no matter who crowd. For yep. some reason, that has been the more as as I've continued on doing the show, that has been the more antagonistic group than than Trumpers. Because when because when when our channel was uh, um, uh, we were when we were unable to go live stream when we were kind of, when we were uh, being suppressed and when uh, we got terminated, you know, uh, I got a lot of support from everyone across the political spectrum. But I found it interesting from Trumpers who say, I may I don't agree with everything you say in the show, but I support your show yes. and you have yes. made me reconsider some things uh, yes. and so, so and, and so and so it, it is it is it is an interesting co a concept of yes talk and i've been told by a lot of people in the past you shouldn't interview this people or you shouldn't interview that politician or this or that and it's it one i i don't like armchair generals telling me what to do and number yep. two this whole thing was this attack on tucker carlson doing this interview guess what it's going to be hot for two uh, for two weeks, probably. And then the world's going to move on to something else far more shinier. And then Hillary Clinton calling him a useful idiot. Well, you called Tulsi Gabbard yes. a Russian asset. Yes. You've called any uh, you called you called Bernie Sanders supporters straight white male. So congratulations, black people, yes. Latino people, women for 2016. You all became straight white men. So so, so there told you go. Me I wasn't black because I didn't vote for him. <laughs> Right, I Biden told me I that. wasn't black because I didn't got to vote for us. What he told me, I think my dad would be really pissed. Mm. But anyway, but yes, well, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah, that's crazy, absolutely. Well, and 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 the thing is, when when we when we have dialogue, when you have a conversation, okay, let's let's hear what Putin has to say. I'm not saying we 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 all become friends and kumbaya and we all agree with each other because that's never going to happen. I'm not going to see that in my lifetime, and right. neither is, is the next three generations. I mean, human beings right. were professionals at at just screwing things up but yes. i at least want to hear okay what is he saying that doesn't mean we're all going to say okay putin you run the show no 
What is he saying? What is he talking about? And is it enough to reconsider? And I'm going to actually be covering after this interview uh, that segment where he talks about the, the U.S. dollar, how he talks yep. about the war in Ukraine, how he yep. talks about his his last interaction with Biden. And the thing is, OK, this is another person's perspective and point of view. And we have to hear that point of view and perspective. But I want to go one step further. Go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. There are people who think that Putin is lying and not telling the truth. And maybe he is. But the point is what he's saying. A lot of people do believe. So even if you say, well, no, he's just doing propaganda. OK, maybe he is. But the point is, whether he is or not, there are millions of people who believe what he is saying. And if we're trying to turn them or change them or get them to not fight wars or mm -hmm. not do the things, we've got to be able to understand where they're coming from. So we can have conversations to get them to go, you know what? No, this is not right at all, right? What, what I found to your point about Republicans or Trumps or whatever, what mm -hmm. I found from my point of view is generally speaking, and, and, and you see it in, in, even in your chat, mm -hmm. the left dismisses the right attacks and insults. Yeah. That's a good, so when, when that's the case, the, the, and when I say left, I mean liberals versus Republicans. I'm sorry. I, I should I yeah. should be more clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You uh, got to be more clear. Yeah, because progressives I technically should, I'm politically homeless. I, I have yes. I have no well, I home with the that. liberal Democrats. So yeah, yes. I'm not a Democrat. <laughs> yes. So Democrats will just dismiss. Democrats always dismiss you based upon something. Uh, are you credentialed or are you valid? They will just dismiss. Oh, he's a this one word story. Mm -hmm. You can't talk to him. Blah, blah. You can't. He's this. He's that. They'll just dismiss. He's crazy. He's an anti-vaxxer, right? Whatever. They just do that thing and they just immediately just dismiss you. They do it immediately. Um, the mm -hmm. other piece, though, is Republicans tend to attack because they think they're righteous. So they just attack you. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a big difference. It's a difference in how they attack each other. I've I've I haven't been attacked as much by the right or Trump's Trumpers as as much as like like maybe 2020. But the, but the thing is, like after a while, because like all, all they kept saying to me was like, oh, you're a communist or a socialist. I'm like, no, because I've had communists and socialists call me call me right wing. And it's just like, <laughs> yes, you know, yes. And, and guys, you, yes. you, you, you're kind of off the yes. mark there. Or is it that right. being told that Chicago is a communist utopia? No, it is not. No, no. Chicago <laughs> is not. I live in New York City, my friend. I get it. Yeah, yeah but, it's, but, it's, but to it's, your point also, not. I had on my show just two nights ago, I had a guy named um, Gunther Ferlinger. He is an Austrian economist who thinks we should expand NATO, who thinks we should expand that the, Euro the Western European world is the right world. We should all expand. We've got to keep out everyone who's from the East. He thinks that the euro it, it should be the, the 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 right answer. That American hegemony, that American imperialism, is a good thing. It's great that we have America. Clearly, I don't believe in those things. I don't think American imperialism is a good thing, right? Clearly, I don't believe that. But he was on board, and I had him on my show, and we talked things out. And the world didn't end. The mm -hmm. world did not end. No, it didn't. But now, I got to put you in the hot seat because Please. good friend of the show, Roger Meadows, said this on Rockfin. Larry, what's up? Forget Adams. Run against AOC, as you should. Uh, you're more anti-war, anti-censorship, pro-criminal justice True. reform than, than she is. AOC has been a complete disaster. I imagine since you guys are pro-capitalist, I mean pro-competition, I'd assume libertarians are pro-antitrust. Also, run to update antitrust laws. So, Roger Meadows is calling you out. Roger Meadows is a good friend. This will be your last question. All right. Would you run against AOC, or are you going to go all in against Eric Adams? Well, the, the reality of it is, I think Roger's correct. I am, I am, and most of which is are completely anti-monopoly, anti, we are all on fixing the, the antitrust laws, 100% true. We don't like the idea of monopoly. We can't stand it. We don't like war, 100%. Don't like censorship. That's 100% correct. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. With that in mind, AOC is my congressperson. It's where I live in Queens. The reality of me running against her making any impact, none. I'll make no impact. I won't, I won't win. I won't get on the ballot. I won't make any impact. I would much rather run for mayor next year. Um, most people in, in my district where I live, the Republicans have no chance of victory. None. Third party, no chance of, of victory. None whatsoever. There's none in New York City also. No chance of me winning in New York City. But New York City has two, two rules that matter. Number one, they have matching funds in New York City. So once you raise a quarter million dollars, which I've already raised over half a million dollars for my last two campaigns, um, you raise quarter million dollars, you get eight to one funds. They will give you two million. So mm -hmm. now I can make an actual campaign in New York City and people can see who I am, which is an important piece. And New York City has a good law, not many of them, but one of the good ones is if you take the money, you must debate. So mm -hmm. it will put me in the debate stage. 
if I'm on a debate stage, I can talk about the things. And Roger and I, again, Roger is not a libertarian. And Roger and I agree on things like public banking system to support local to support localized uh, people. Localism mm -hmm. is a big libertarian issue, right? Mm -hmm. And most socialists also like uh, localism. In fact, um, you know, our our brother Howie Hawkins, our Marine brother Howie Hawkins, yeah. he talks about localism all the time. He's like, <laughs> localize, localize, localize. We all agree on that. So we agree on that. We also agree on ballot initiatives, citizen uh, ballot initiatives. Precisely. Like, Ro Roger and I are 100%. Local in the city and in the state, yes, 100%. So we could still push some good issues. And whether I win or not, these issues have to become front, the top, the front. And that is why independence also are so important. The mm -hmm. fact that an independent gets on that debate stage, again, whether it's Cornell West, Jill Stein, me, whoever, Libertarian, RFK Jr., whoever it is, if a third party is on that debate stage, it becomes not other guy bad. It becomes issue. If we mm -hmm. just have Trump and Biden, it's just going to be each one young at the other. Uh, th that old man's worse than me, old man. That's all mm -hmm. it's going to be. I'd rather actually have a conversation. It's yeah, I've I've made the prediction, especially in 2020, where the Biden Trump debates is two old men fighting over a cold bowl of soup and that cold bowl of soup being America. And uh, we're, yes. we're going to we're going we're gonna to get a click, copy, paste, repeat of it again, too. And look, I'm not afraid of a Trump presidency. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do for election night. Um. I'm going to cook myself a nice ribeye steak and maybe I'll cover the election. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll have to think about it. But, uh, you know, all in all, I'm not afraid of overall how it's going to turn out. What I will be focusing on is the overall success and hopefully the ground that the third party candidates, all of them. And I mean, all of them can Great. hopefully win. And I, ideally, and this is a tall order. I do want to see third parties, at least each of the candidates that goes for RFK, West, Stein and whoever the libertarian nominee is going to be and whoever else is running as an independent to get like at least one electoral college vote. Now, is that going to happen? Me touch that no. Piece. Yes. Let no. Me cover but, that. But, Hold but on. on. But, I want to cover that. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. And this is important to people understand the number one thing this year that the independents can do together is to actually get enough electoral votes to throw the election into the Congress and have a contingent election. That's what I want to see. If that happens, regardless of who wins, we have just made third parties valid. We have Precisely. just made it that they're valid, that the next time any one of us wants to run, okay, this is real. That I want to bring that up. Go ahead, please. No, no, no that, that's perfectly fine. And I, I do want to see that. Now, can that happen? There is a possibility, but it's the percent, but there's a lot of ground that third parties and independents have to do. Uh, but yes. I would like to at least ideally. I, and I'm saying it's going to happen, but ideally I'd like to have like, like to see it happen. So my final question to you, Larry, because I know you got a, a lot of stuff that you're working on. You got this big event and please send me those links for that event so I can at least talk about it and cover it on my show. Uh, yep. One, where can people find you online and social media? Where does your show happen? And when you run for mayor, will you finally educate the people of New York City that Chicago style pizza is a superior pizza? <laughs> Okay, three pieces. I'll touch each one of them. One, Larry Sharp everything. Larry Sharp Twitter, Larry Sharp Rumble, Larry Sharp YouTube, Larry Sharp Facebook, Larry Sharp all the things. Um, I do my show usually 7 p.m. Uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays usually, and Monday at 9. You've been on my show more than once, so I'll have you on again. <laughs> so yes, yes sir, no problem. Uh, we do it. Yes, we do it often. Um, also, I do a lot of posting all over the place. Please enjoy. Uh, second piece, uh, it's freeandequal.org. I will post that later if you want to, so you can see that. If you want to check that out. Yeah, yeah, send um, it to me. I, I hope to run for mayor next year. That is my goal. And Chicago style pizza is absolutely an inferior to oh New York State God. thin crust. Sorry, oh it just God. is. Wow. It's the way of the world. Wow, I wow, wow, is. wow. This is the last time you're on my show, buddy. <laughs> last time you're here. Forget <laughs> politics. That's the last time you are, <laughs> you are censored. Censored forever. So there you go. Uh, all right. So listen, Larry, thank you so much for taking time to joining us on our show. Uh, to my Can TV audience, if you want to learn more about Hard Lens Media, follow us on YouTube, Rumble, Rockfin, Odyssey, and Kick. Please follow Larry Sharp. All right. He has been doing some great work, uh, and I've been on his show before. And this is an example of, look. I can disagree with someone politically, but that doesn't mean it rules my life. I could talk to somebody like an adult because I at least want to see what other people are talking about, different perspectives and different politics. That's 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 how the world runs, people. You just can't be in your liberal art space, in your little snowflake bubble, and think that everything's fine. So, Larry, once again, thank you so much for being on our show. Uh, any other final words before we head on out? Uh, anyone who's considering, um, in any case, voting this year, Please vote third party. 
Obviously, I'm biased libertarian, but if you don't like libertarians, I don't care. Vote third party no Agreed. matter what. It does matter. It is the way we begin to change this system. Otherwise, mm -hmm. nothing else changes. Thank you, guys. Precisely and exactly. We'll see. The rest of the main show continues on, folks. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. Larry, thank you again for being on our show. Land of the free, and you'll know us by the trail of death. It's just one more world war to complete the set. When you live by the pike, you die by the pith. You die wide-eyed, still pleading the fifth, or crying divine epithets and pathetic attempts at defense. All empathetic for those on your side of the fence. Well, I'll gladly put you and your legacy into an alternate tense of faltering senses and altered events. Like hunted ain't a hearse, it's a reaper's stretch. Ah, how sweet, she said. Bunch of hordes in the street like it's evil dead. Where the thin blue line meets razor's edge. And where the corporate ladder ascends to a steel-toed boot that awaits on the ledge. You'll be licking it fresh at your boss's request till it stomps each finger and watches you fall to your death and drown in an ocean of debt. Gone with the fodder who gathered to honor the patient left who purity tested themselves into sections step by step till the next election when it's just one them and the sound of their well-read theorized breath. That's harm reduction for the lowly cost of you holding your nose and just openly buying the theft. Maybe that's all in the flick of the pen. Maybe we're all one unmarked van from a trip to the pen. Being guarded by pigs who exist on a diet of dying breaths of much worthier men. Honey, heaven's expecting you. Just don't get too hung up on who they let in. Just look up at the shine of the pearly gates. You don't need to worry if there's lead in the paint. You don't need to worry if there's lead in the water, lead in the milk, lead in the honey, lead in the caustic embrace of the heavenly father. Lead is the flavor of passive perpetual slaughter. Lead is the taste of us led to the ledge by the lure of the legend of expert consensus. And then beckon to stretch it just one step farther. And I hope all the folks who were boastfully gloating and toasting themselves as the heroes of COVID for boosting their boosters and doing their part are now equally thrilled to be starstruck martyrs. All laid in a government grave with anonymous markers, like you're back from the carvers and off to the splicer. You're the very first wave to be slain in the war against Pfizer. That hundred years war against Pfizer. They are thinning the crowd that is striking right now to bleed adequate pay from those inhuman misers. Who all sit in their office and designate coffins to people regarded as nothing but profit for Kaiser. Still the Dems want you nicer. Dems want you softer. Dems want you kinder. Yeah, they all want you graciously starving in silence. You will speak when you're spoken to. Rest of the time, you and all of us peasants are merely depressing statistics neglected in Congress's binders. All bled bone dry, then fed to the grinder. Our headstones lie in each step as reminders. That's a lesson in object permanence learned in the furnace by workers consigned to the fire. Workers bled bone dry, then fed by the fed to the grinder. to the grinder. Now the fat went straight to your head. Mind what you hide and your size unsad and your eyes turn blind to the signs unread. Flag bright red so you let it in bed. You let it inside you'll see that it's fed. Never you'll mind that it grinds your wealth into bread for itself and it bleeds you dry and it dines on the dead. Now the fed went straight to your head. Mind what you hide and your size unsaid and your eyes turn blind to the signs unread. Flag bright red so you let it in bed. You let it inside and you'll see that it's fed. Never you'll mind that it grinds your wealth into bread for itself, and it bleeds you dry, then it dines on the dead. And the
that went straight to your head. Mind what you hide and your sighs unsaid, and your eyes turn blind to the signs unread. Flag bright red, so you'll let it in bed. You'll let it inside, you'll see that it's fed. Never you mind that it grinds your wealth into bread for itself. Bleeds you dry, then it dines on the dead. The Fed went straight to your head. Mind what you hide, and your signs unsaid, and your eyes turn blind to the signs on her end. Flag bright red, so you let it in bed. You let it inside, and you'll see that it's fed. Never you mind that it grinds your wealth into bread for itself, and it bleeds you dry, then it dies on the dead. Here's where our leaders would see us all led. Here's where our leaders would see us all led. Uh, here's where our leaders would see us all led. Here's where our leaders would see us all led. The pen went straight to your head. Find what you hide and your signs unsaid. And your eyes turn blind to the signs on the red. Black, bright, red, so you let it in bed. You let it inside and you'll see that it's fed. Never your mind that it grinds your wealth in the bread from itself. And the bleed to dry that it dies on the dead. The pen went straight to your head. Mind what you hide and your signs unsaid. And your eyes turn blind to the signs on the red. Black, bright, red, so you let it in you let it inside, you'll see that it's fed. Never your mind, that it grinds your mind, that it grinds yourself, and it bleeds you dry, that it dies on the dead. Here's where our leaders would see us all led.